So the crucial thing that makes all of our calculations possible for isosceles triangles is that these base angles, that's the two angles opposite the equal sides, are always equal as well as those equal side lengths. So let me prove to you why that is. Let's take an isosceles triangle and label it ABC, where AB and AC are the equal side lengths. Now let's draw a line from the vertex at A, perpendicular, i.e. at right angles, to that base BC, which will meet the base at a point we'll call D. So these two triangles that we've created, ABD and ACD, are congruent. That's because the side lengths AB and AC are equal, because they are the equal sides of the isosceles triangle. The side AD is shared between the two triangles, so they're literally the same line segment here. And angle ADB and angle ADC are both 90 degrees, because that line AD we created is perpendicular, i.e. at right angles to BC. So we know that these two triangles must be congruent for those reasons, and so we do have that the two angles marked will be equal as well, because they will be the corresponding angles in those congruent triangles. So they are the base angles of the isosceles triangle, so if we have equal lengths in an isosceles triangle, then we definitely have equal angles as well. So every isosceles triangle has this pattern. We've got two equal sides and two equal base angles. And then this third angle at the top, we will often refer to as the apex angle. That can be any size, so long as all of the three angles still add up to the 180 degrees that we always get when we sum the angles in a triangle.